Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And um, so this particular episode, this is, I think, it could be, maybe, no, maybe it's the second time I've done this. It might be the first or second time. Because uh, I'm thinking I already did this recently, but I don't remember. Anyway, this could be the first time, or second time, that I'm reviewing a wine that I've already had. Matter of fact, I've already had an entire bottle of this. Um... So one of the things I bought three bottles of from Woot, and uh, didn't really have any non-review wine in the house, and I wanted some wine. I was like, well, I got a bunch of these bottles. Let's let's crack one open and have it. So now I'm finally reviewing it. So which wine is this? Now this is the Mouton Noir uh, Montgomery Place, uh, 2008 from California. Um, it just says California Red Wine on the back. When you go to their website, at least for the 2007 vintage, it says Napa Valley. So I don't know if the, the vintages have there's something different about the two, um, but it just says uh, California red wine. So we're going to assume that maybe most of it came from Napa, but not enough to put Napa Valley on there. Uh, this is a combination of, I'll well, go by the website, um, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Petit Verdot. At least 2007 was. We're going to assume that it's the same grapes. The formula might be a little different. Um, bought this, like I said, off of Woot Wine. Uh, $19.99 a bottle. It was like just under $60 for the three bottles. So uh, off the website, you can buy at least 2007. Oh, mailing list. Never mind. I thought you could buy it directly from the map from the from the hoopty nugget. <laughs> anyway, um, but yes, uh, it's around twenty dollars uh, if you can find it. Um, it looks like it's mostly a restaurant wine and a mailing list wine. So, Mouton Ward wine for dummies press kit. Uh, nothing there. All right. Uh, anyway, so information about this particular wine. I've, I've been wanting to try this wine for a while, or try try um, this stuff. This um, no, I didn't want to do that. The gentleman that's behind this wine is Andre Mack. Um, he is uh, from the Texas area. From from how I've read his bio, uh, he actually was here in San Antonio. Uh, left a pretty successful job, decided to become a sommelier. Um, worked here, worked in Houston, um, went to California, then went to New York, um, various restaurants. Uh, a few years ago decided to uh, make a wine, and this is the result of that, of uh, the wine. Uh, this is not the only vintage he has, he has several vintages now. So this is um, what he does, and uh, he and I have connected on Twitter uh, for quite a while. And uh, I've been really wanting to try his wines, and I finally, you know, Whoop came around and was like, hey, here's the deal. I'm like, okay, let's do it. So, um, uh, I, when I had the wine, I know I really liked it, but let's go ahead and do an actual, it's kind of a, more of a, an evaluation, unbiased, not unbiased, unemotional evaluation. So, um, let's check it out. All right, so I get kind of a, there's a bit of woodsiness to it. Um, there's a bit of uh, darker red fruits to it. I 
I also get a bit of, I don't want to use the word chemical, but um, I don't know, just, there's, another, there's another aroma in there that I don't remember smelling in the last one. Then again, I wasn't really trying to totally evaluate it. I, you know, I smelled it, kind of, okay, I like it, tasted it, and drank it. You know, I wasn't like going through a more uh, involved like evaluation of it. But yeah, mostly the, the, the woodsiness and uh, dark red fruits. live audience outside mowing along um, anyway so on the palette you've got the um, you've got the uh, I don't want to use I guess because yesterday I saw the word rustic you got that woodsy rustic type of um, feel to it um, and I, I, that's probably what I was smelling was like kind of more of the wood aspect because I really do feel like I got a lot of wood on here. Probably a little more than I would I would personally prefer, but um, uh, not too bad, not not overpowering. Um, again, the the darker red fruits, really more of the raspberries uh, rather than cherries, but you get both of those. Uh, medium on the tannins, it's not really drying out the mouth too much, but. Um, Pretty decent there. Acid level is pretty good too because I'm getting, I've got the, the good salivating going. And a bit of smokiness to it, and a bit of sweetness to it. This is one of those wines I'm like, barbecue! It would be great with barbecue. Um, this is more of a, 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 a lighter red wine in the sense that I would pair it with lighter foods. Not like that, that other red wine that I had where I'm like, oh, really hearty and dark, you know, brown sauces and stuff like that. You know, this is something that would, would pair, I think, really well with, with uh, ribs, with brisket. Um, you could put it with steak, totally just like a, just a plain steak. No sauces on it. Um, you just got it right off the grill in the middle of July. Um, you can even pair it with like brats and hot dogs. Oh, maybe not hot dogs, but um, you know that that type of that type of wine would stand up really well to any steak that you pretty, pretty much put at it. Um, but just you just got it right off the grill. No no fancy stuff. No no sauces on it. No butter. None of that stuff. Um, just a straight steak and potatoes. Maybe, I think it's a good wine for that. Um, Score-wise, I do really like the wine. Uh, I'm going to put it at an 86, um, so really well made. I like it a lot. Andre, I think uh, he did a great job with it. Um, if you are looking to get something a little different, I would totally recommend uh, buying it. Of course, granted, it's something you're probably only going to find in a restaurant, and it's, probably, and it's not a lot of restaurants. I mean, New York has a lot of restaurants, but I'm, not, I'm probably never going to find it here in Texas. Uh, but uh, you can also join the mailing list and check that out. He also has another wine that, uh, let me go back to on here, called Thief in Law. Uh, it's a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, it also was a very low produced, only 300 cases, at least 2006. So it's not a it's not a highly produced it doesn't have a lot of high production numbers. So um, yeah, if you can find it, get it. Pretty good. All right. So what else? Um, this is probably episode two hundred nine. I'm not sure if uh, Ceci and I have uh, since I recorded all four of these in one day. I'm not sure if we've uh, collaborated to do episode two ten together or not. Um, you'll know you'll know by the next episode. By now, you probably will know whether or not I've. Uh, I'm doing because I'll have a bunch of tweets about it. Um, let's see, that's going to do it for now. Uh, thank you for stopping by, and uh, we'll see everyone next time. Make sure you check out Andre's website and his wines and friend me up. That's it. See everyone next time. <laughs>